Welcome to Raz Alcama, welcome to the Ritz Carlton. This phenomenal brace of Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. I've been wanting to drive this car ever since they announced it. We saw it first at the Geneva Motor Show. I drove the Giulia Quadrifoglio uh, at the very beginning of this year on ice. And I said, wouldn't it be amazing if they stuck in the 510 horsepower engine out of the Giulia Quadrifoglio in the Stelvio? And sure enough, a few months later, we are here to test drive it in the desert. So the juxtaposition of when the last time I experienced an Alpha is huge. Also, the UAE gets about five days of rain per year. Yesterday was one of them. When we drove here, there was floods all over the place because the area isn't really used to it. Uh, but arguably, we're in exactly the right car to test it all out. But today, the thing that I'm most excited about is getting this car to the top of Jebel Jays. If you follow this channel regularly, you'll know that it's one of my, if not my all time favorite driving roads. And since I last drove it, they've extended the road by another 6K. So me and Adam are gonna go up there in this car and try and reach the very top of the mountain before we reach the border that drops over eventually into Oman. So we've got a wicked adventure. We're gonna head inside now. We have a briefing with Alpha, hopefully some uh, fine coffee, and then we're gonna hit the road. Let's do it. meeting room. Before we show you what's in there, because it's an amazingly cool room. Check out these. I mean, literally called car shoe, but it looks like they've done a collab with Alpha. How wicked are they? I like this, like, suede Alcantara vibe on the heel there. Look at the detail on that. I think we, might, blue as well. we might have to inquire about these. <laughs> anyway. Match, match it up to the car, whichever we got. Oh, yeah, yeah, do you imagine if they gave us, I mean, these aren't, these eight J's aren't far off. One thing we haven't mentioned yet, Alfa Romeo have announced they're going back into F1. So there's lots of like vintage racing inspired stuff. So the idea of the this walk is very much to sort of take you guys behind the scenes as to what would happen on a, on a car launch and show you all of the, the stuff that you might not see from a more conventional car review. And these are the kind of details which I, I love sharing because they often go overlooked. Dude, this is, in, this is immense. Thank you. Look at that, man. This is one skill I certainly do not have. I know this is quite concept arty, but the back of the seats pretty much is like that. It's sculpted. There's so much sculpture, so much carbon. And in fact, even all, all the way down here on the real car, all of that is carbon. Even the pillows, check this out. Daytona insert. Mate, I'm not even kidding. The pillows are Alcantara. <laughs> Look at this. I want this. I would like to buy this room, please, and ship it home. It's, it's so cool. We've flown halfway around the world to come and talk about a car. But this is why we're going to try and do two videos. One which is specific to the car, and one which is our wider journey. So, breakfast. For maybe <laughs> looks good. Oh, mate, check out you can just see the carbon back seats, looks pretty cool. Right, so we're gonna have to spend the next few minutes now rigging up all the cameras on the car, and then, um, yeah, we're gonna go and hit the highest point in the UAE. All right, you ready? Should we see what this thing's about? Windows down, windows down, and it might blow the microphone out. Look. See what's actually going on behind me would be cool. Okay. Oh, mate. That is a gear shift. That oh. pop is, is loud. I, I know I go on about gearboxes a lot. That's not the LT pop. But this is so important to have a responsive box. That's so good, mate. This road's gonna be ridiculous in this thing. <laughs> I'm so excited for this, I can't tell you. This is already a great road, and this is just us leaving the hotel. Hey, exactly. So that's how. Ooh.
start. Now. This is the start now, yeah. Oh, well, but this is we're in an SUV, and this is the hauling the so hard. There we go. It sounds fantastic. It sounds great. If I was in the market for a 4x4, this and is you a would big, be big, contender. big contender. You'd be crazy not to. This is it. Wow. What a road. Listen to that shift, though. Listen to this. Give the engine and drivetrain a bit of context. Oh, the guy who cool. was yeah, what a cool oh, what a cool. the guy who was uh, in charge of the development of the engine. Oh, mate! It even has a bit of oversteer. What on earth? <laughs> and if you came up here when it was closed as well, we came up here when it was closed in two supercars. We're still at the bottom. We're still we're at the bottom. The, we're the just bottom getting going. Yeah. And a bit of drift. <laughs> yeah, so back to it. The guy that was in, uh, that is in charge of the development of the engine, was the guy who works on the Ferrari FXX program uh, and those engines. Yeah. So the guy appreciates how important it is for the relationship between the drivetrain and the engine to be sweet. <laughs> He's just nailed this. Yeah, from he? here on the passenger seat, I think he's got it right. He's got it right. He has it right. It's fantastic. Oh, it's beautiful. Get out of the way. SUV guys. Get out of the way. I know. Uh, the fact that we can go on. be thinking, get out of the way in you know, an SUV. Yeah, yeah. And it's as practical as the standard Stelvio, don't forget. But with all of this, this go. Wow. It's it a feels, wonderful thing. It feels very stable. Planted, doesn't it? Doesn't it doesn't roll much And what is really nice is when you turn in under braking, when you have trail braking, the back doesn't get, it doesn't squirm or get light. It's just... I'm impressed with oh, really wow. impressed. What did you think about that? And well, we're that not, I would say we're probably, so, so they built an extra 6K since I was last here, and this point was about three quarters. So, in fact, if you look up there, all of those different shelves are different levels of road, and, and the last time I was there, it stopped about there, okay. and now it goes all That's the way in, up there. There's a proper corner up there, I can see. You can see the wall? The I think it goes up to oh. a very high point up there. This thing, it's ridiculous. I, I, I mean, who would have thought I could, a 4x4 four four could do what that thing just did? And it's playful. Like the, the biggest thing, though, is it's, it's not, you know, it doesn't understeer. In fact, it actually favoured oversteer, oversteer earlier. Like, if you get on the gas early enough, it doesn't, like, run wide. It just squats and goes. Man. It's so much fun. Alpha have put on some hospitality halfway up a mountain, as you do. So let's go and check that out. Got on board myself a proper camera, so... Instead of taking, documenting my life via an iPhone, we have an actual camera here. We went for the A, Sony A6300. Um, was about to go for the A6500, but the only advantage was uh, five axis stabilization, which is better for film rather than photographs. And we film on that too. Blue, look how, look how great it looks in blue. There we go. Blue with the contrast. Yellow, cal Yellow calipers, that's the one. It is cool. I really like that. There's another so red one. Look, so Check this out. They've gone and created this pop-up hospitality area on the side of this mountain. With this view, hopefully we can have some Italian coffee. You're having a better treatment than I had last time I came here. Like, they closed the road, but they didn't set up shop for us. Chicken wrap. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Some Kaiser Deers, mm. however you say it. Some mm. balls. Mm. Balls. So good. So to put this into a bit of context, um, this place is so far in the middle of nowhere that the last time we came, we were es escorted by a fuel truck because we were filming here all day and the petrol station was so far away. So to come here and have falafel shop, coffee. Brilliant. Like well, all of this set, like, the, I can't stress to you how in the middle of nowhere this place is. And we've got this like pop up cafe. Right, say you go to Dubai, 
you're maybe an hour and a half from here. Yep. Just rent a car. It doesn't have to be anything fancy because the road is so good. Uh, it's worth it for the views alone. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. Uh, unfortunately, I can't guarantee that there'll be a falafel shop at the top of the mountain. <laughs> but uh, pack your own and come up top. It's amazing. Leonardo Vinci. Leonardo Vinci. Master of engines. <laughs> master, master of engines. <laughs> <laughs> the, the engine is, uh, let's say, the brother of the of the Julia engine. So we made okay. only some modification because we need to adjust the engine for the layout of uh, mm -hmm. the old all, all we drive. Okay. So we need to put the front differential in the front. So we need to work, of course, to make some okay. modification on the engine for the bad way that's the best one. But nevertheless, it remains more or less the same. Right. So the, the DNA is the same, yeah. calibration is the same, and performance are the same. This is my favorite engine. Yeah. It, even so to put that into context, this guy has worked on FXX engine. Yeah, 430 Scuderia, 430 Scuderia FX, 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 458. 458. Yes. And FX. this is your favorite engine? Yes. Definitely. I mean, we might as well all go home now. That says it all. <laughs> it's, it is that good. It's very, very cool. Was it, was it hard to make it sound that good? Because Turbo engines are quite hard to make it sound good, right? Yeah, this was another tricky thing that we did. So what we would like to to, to achieve was to have the, the engine that sounds like a natural spirit. So I don't know if you noticed that. It seems that you have the, the intake mm. noise, yep, and there is no electronic device on this uh, on this engine. Nothing. That's just there is no no wow. no fake sound on, on the car. The organic. Yeah, yeah sound. absolutely. And, and it's done so cool. exclusively <laughs> with uh, with the muffler, making uh, the right tuning of the muffler yeah. and the cabin of the car, yeah. so that you can feel the engine, uh, the the sound, both of the exhaust and the, the intake. And this this was a so it was good. a funny result. Day in the life of an automotive YouTuber. We're just doing some. Uh, Casual tracking shots with these guys hanging out at the back of the car in front. <laughs> this is a great thing about filming in areas of the world like this. Uh, they're so open to just creativity and making great content, and they'll allow you to get the best shots by doing things like this. And it's it's just just brilliant. We're just getting multiple camera angles for the uh, the review video of the car. We've lost. We've lost the, uh, the the bendy arm. It's like a squeegee arm that you can put on this and get different angles. Uh, so Slake's come up with the inspired genius idea of mounting the GoPro on the, the fuel cap. The problem is the wind resistance when you're going along blows it closed. So we're gonna wedge it open with some socks. <laughs> I think that'll make, this'll work. This is... Well, you see if it works. The thing is we don't have to go too fast. That's okay. That's pretty strong. What a great right. angle that is as well. A press go. That's a, it's a nice wide angle as well, so we should capture it. Let's shoot this. Let's go. It's holding. It's holding. I can see the wind resistors pushing against it. I, actually, I think it's met the sock now, so it's just like... Um, I think it's wide enough. I think it's wide enough to capture that as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bathroom. So I've just arrived here, as you've just seen, in complete darkness. So I kind of barely know where I am. Is there a... Oh, no, that turns the lights off in here. I want to turn the lights on this bathroom. It's magnificent. Look at the size of it. Oh, there we go. The hotel that I stayed in in Dubai, the whole room was this big. This must be the shower. Cavernous. Oh, massive waterfall head. So one thing I have gathered is that this hotel is quite unique in that every room, as it were, is actually more of its own 
villa slash apartment. Well, check it out, look at the room. What an amazing place. There's more sliding doors. What? Massive <laughs> extra suite here. Look at the size of it. Look at this. Bosh. I wish the angle of my lens was wider so you could appreciate this, but it's huge. So if you're wondering, this is the Ritz Carlton Hotel in Ras Al Khaimah. Uh, it's known as the Al Wadi Desert Resort. Very posh. I'm gonna try and turn down this uh, generic music for one moment. Ciao for now. And then, hmm, I wonder what's behind here. Oh. Private pool. What? How do I quick undo? Let me. What on earth? This is ridiculous. This is my own private pool. My room, private balcony, pool. This is unbelievable. Anyway, on that note, I am absolutely shattered. Uh, phenomenal day. I hope you've enjoyed the vlog style that's going to accompany the actual review of the new Stelvio. Magnificent car, magnificent event. Anyway guys, as always, thanks for watching. Comments below, questions below, and I look forward to uh, bringing you some more content soon. Ciao!